Hello and welcome to episode 49 of the can Ass Podcast. We're almost to the half century mark. We're almost at the half century mark, that's right. Very exciting. We've uh, we've been on hiatus for two weeks. Because was, Victor uh, was out of the country. On a humanitarian mission. Yep. yep. In Ecuador? Ecuador. Yeah, yeah. nice. Very good. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so now, uh, now we're back. And what a time to be back. Like, I right. think the episode today uh, will touch, like, unbelievably quick on footy. And okay, then sure. we'll go, because there's some pretty big news that came out of footy. Okay. Uh, and then we'll and then just go to... Only um, hockey afterwards? Only hockey, only trade deadline. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. So, um, all right, super quick. Footy. All okay. we need to know is that she believes cop, the Canadian woman, did awful. Um, we're not going to share what it, it was pretty Wait, bad. what? That's what she it's called? She believes cop, yeah. They did not do very well. But yeah. They beat um, Brazil, but they got manhandled by uh, uh, Japan, and they lost to the States. So they lost. They were out immediately. Not a great tune-up, but also they didn't have any games tuning up, which is part of the reason that the, the women tried to go on strike but weren't allowed, and it was just a big ordeal. Was it because the, of like Soccer Canada? Yeah. Being so split? the president of Soccer Canada has since resigned. Uh, apparently a letter from every single province... Uh, <laughs> Telling him that they don't trust him in charge uh, is what did it for him. So that's nice. So basically a vote of non-confidence for just well, exactly. like, like provinces. And? That's weird. And yeah, cool. the biggest news to come out of this mm. is that they have a temporary deal in place now. With players with the Canada soccer. A temporary deal in place now that makes them uh, both sides relatively happy. That's good. So that's huge. That's huge. All right, that's it. That's it for footy. <laughs> I think. Well, that's pretty news. important. Yeah, no. Yeah, that's been news. I didn't know. I didn't know that. So that's pretty cool. But the biggest thing that happened this week uh, is the NHL trade deadline, or the trade deadline before the actual trade deadline. Seriously, the trade <laughs> deadline week. Trade yeah. deadline dead week. Uh, unreal trades this year. Oh, like, definitely unreal. Um, of the Canadian teams, and I think of all NHL teams. The only team that did a better job than Toronto is Boston. No, uh, I think New York. I guess so. Yeah, New York has Patrick Kane job. and Tarasenko. True. I didn't even think of that. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, because you don't need um, help with Igor Shesterkin because he's Igor Shesterkin. is insane. And then you have I have a pretty def- decent like D core. But now that you have Tarasenko and Kane. Added with the Benajad and Panarin and Kreider, it's it's kind of unstoppable if they play their cards right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree. Um, but this is a Canadian I, podcast, so we're going to talk about no. But the you Canadian know what, teams. though, I do think like they added probably the biggest star power for sure. Tarasenko, Kane, really, that's all you need to build that team. They didn't give up much in the starting. No, I, which I don't is disagree- surprising. And I don't disagree with that whatsoever. What I think who actually improved their team the most and got exactly what they needed was, uh, for me, was Toronto. I despise yeah. that fan base. Uh, and I just, I hate the team, I'll, I'll be honest with you. But that they've added everything they needed. Also, Ryan O'Reilly was, for me, the best addition oh, of the entire that's, deadline. That's, that was a pretty good addition. For yeah. me, it was cute. And just, sorry to interrupt, but Victor's Furnace wants to chime in so yeah, you'll hear that in the background but um no i agree toronto really did improve uh their team quite a bit and they um, have a lot of trades too like yeah they, they might have gotten worse in, in defense in one specific player but sandine has better potential but gustafson's better than sandine right now he's having a better year yeah i can agree with that yeah and they got a first out of it too I mean Boston's first, so it's gonna be the last one of the last few picks. But still, it's a it's still yeah. first, so like they basically lost a first and then just regained a first. If they beat uh, Boston, they're gonna improve their. Uh, they'll improve <laughs> their, their pick. Yeah, their pick. Yeah. yeah, hilarious. By like quite a bit. By too. quite a bit. Yeah. 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 Um, and then um, I would say out of the Canadian teams, um, I guess the only ones that made significant uh, improvements to their team is Edmonton. With uh, at home and uh, I argue Dukestad. Ottawa made a good addition. A, a good, uh, not that it's going to count for anything because they're not making the playoffs. Oh, they could if they like 
it's like crazy, but Chikrin's, yeah. And okay, yeah, Ottawa too, but um, yeah, they definitely improved their defense big time with with Chikrin. That's what they needed. That defense. Chikrin and Chabot, horrid. man. That defense is horrid. But it's Chabot first pairing, Chikrin second pairing. Yeah. And is Sanderson a lefty or a right? I can't remember. I don't remember. But um, yeah, I mean. What got me the most for this deadline, though, by far, was the fact that Vancouver was a buyer for True. whatever reason. It's weird. You wanna, you wanna, and not Montreal tank, but nothing. you wanna play poorly to get uh, Bedard. But not then just they that like they they're giving up draft picks for guys who are gonna be there for a year and then leave right away. Like what? What's that their is goal? true too. They're not making the playoffs. There's absolutely no uh, way. Yeah. It's gonna take an absolute miracle for them to get in. Well, you know how. Uh, Bad the uh, management and uh, that organization Vancouver. or the organization. I mean, yeah. I feel so. bad for the fans. As much as I don't like them, I feel bad for them. Yeah. And then Calgary did like two small trades, basically like AHL trades, and then one for trading the brothers. Stretcher, yeah. Nick, yeah. For the first time in the history of the NHL, yes. two brothers are traded for each other. Could you imagine? <laughs> like they're like. Um, <laughs> Richie's like, oh, I'm going to Arizona. Hell yeah, I'm going to play with my brother. I'm like, oh wait, my brother's wait, going the other way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be uh, brutal. That would be brutal. That'd be so brutal. It would be fun to play with your brother, but yeah. Oh well. It's, oh well. It's like at least he made history, so that's good. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that's nuts. But um, wait, yeah. Let's, but let's go. Let's let's talk about these additions. And like Vancouver, who, who do they buy? They, they made two big, they made not big trades, but they gave up draft picks for, for like rentals pretty much. It wasn't a, like a big deal that they ended up getting. Yeah, let me look yeah, it look up. Yeah, look it up, look it up. I'll, I'll tell you, uh, let's go with the, with the, I'll start with the Leafs then. So Sandine for Gustafson first. I'd say good trade for this year, and they're in win now right now. Uh, they're actually uh, get out of the first round of the playoffs now, right now. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. Gustafson's playing unreal. He'll he'll slot into the second pair pretty easy. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Toronto's been dealing with a ton of injuries on their blue line this year too, which has made it tough. But um, and then after after the Sandy, so before Sandy was O'Reilly and Akari, that was a big one. O'Reilly and Akari was a big deal. That because O'Reilly slides pickups. into their third center, which for me now like the. The Toronto Maple Leafs centers are probably as deep uh, as the Oilers now. Because their third line center is not better than Nuge. But O'Reilly and Nuge, I'd say O'Reilly's a better defensive player than Nuge. Oh, Nuge is playing ungodly this year. Right? Nuge is better and did you see year. the fight with Hall? Just sticking up for Yamamoto? Oh so my god. When he came into the dressing room, do you know what they yelled? No. The players were chanting Rocky. Oh, hilarious. <laughs> that's hilarious. After his interview. He, uh, they come in and they start chanting Rocky, Rocky. Anyways, not Canadian, so we'll continue. Um, yeah, O'Reilly was huge for me. That was that was the biggest addition of the of the uh, deadline. Um, I would have loved to have seen. I would have loved to have seen like a Jonathan Taze come here, or uh, or O'Reilly come here as our as our third line center mm-hmm. and let Nuge play wing. Um, but it's mostly the defensive uh, stalwart, you know, but a defensive forward, I mean. That said, we did make another addition. The, actually, sorry, we'll continue with Toronto. Um, they, they didn't shore up their goaltending, which is a little concerning, but Sam Sonov and Murray seem to be doing a decent job right now. Yeah. They like, got something in the world. They, play the way they, they did play, have, like, that good, good HL goalie that they keep uh, calling up when people are injured, so, so it's not too, too bad. Yeah, they don't necessarily have a, a, a number one um, goalie. It, it's similar to Edmonton. We don't have a number one here. We no. just have two. Just a one A, one B kind of thing. Yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. And and then some minor moves. Like they got rid of some cap um, by trading away Janmark, Jan Croak, whatever his name is, Kali Jan Croak, I think. Mm-hmm. Traded him away. Um, yeah, but apart from that, like. Good moves. I think Toronto Just, improved their team a lot. They did five trades, I think. Yeah. They all helped. Uh, they brought in uh, uh, Ben, Luke, Sh- no, so, uh, Luke Shen, sorry, which is good. They brought in Luke Shen, which is a good uh, good addition, in yeah, my opinion. Yeah, that's good. They, um... This helps with their defense. Yeah. Yeah. I agree Absolutely. with that. 
Um, okay, so let's go back to Vancouver, which we yeah, tried to Vancouver, start, but then kind of messed coast, up. Coast to coast, coast to coast. Coast to coast. Okay, so some, I guess I'll talk, or I'll tell you like the quote unquote major trades that they did. Um, so they traded, or they acquired Philip Pronick and a fourth That's from Detroit for a first and a second. For a first and a second! It's not like they're trading away thirds and sevenths or anything. It's like a first and a second. What idiots! That first could be the first overall pick. It's cap. It's it's like uh, lottery protected only this year. But still, like, why would you trade a first? Uh, like that trade. That trade was confusing because I was baffled by it. Uh, Actually, I, and, and Kronik is injured right now too. Mm -hmm. Are they counting on him to be like solid for next year? Vancouver is not a good team defensively at all. Kronik is not a defensive defenseman. No, he's, he's an offensive, offensive defenseman. So that's even more confusing. So, <laughs> so that was the oh, the weirdest, I guess, for Vancouver because they gave up quite a bit for someone with have that has one more year after yeah. this year. Um, and then the Luke Shen trade for a third round pick. So they got a third round pick out of. For Luke Shen. Still ridiculous. Still ridiculous, yeah. Um, they acquired uh, Kravtsov from the Rangers for uh, Lockwood and a 7th. Which is, I oh, guess, yeah. okay. Yeah, 7th doesn't usually yeah. amount to anything. Um, like Nick Lindstrom. Yeah. They uh, traded Lazar for a 4th of next year. Which is... Actually, quite surprising that you got a fourth for Lazar, because he hasn't been too good. But He's, I was ex yeah. I was expecting like a fifth or a sixth, but at All least right. they got a fourth, so that's that's good. Um, that's basically it for like major trades, I guess. But just that chronic trade is weird. <laughs> yeah, absolutely agree. Uh, not not the greatest. No. Um, Okay, we can go to Edmonton, I guess. Just two additions for us. No subtraction. Ah, I mean, subtraction. Well, three transactions. Because we traded Pooley RV. Oh, Pooley for... RV. Why am I yeah. forgetting him? Yeah, Pooley RV left for the cap uh, casualty. We got this uh, young Finnish kid who's supposed to be like a super, super skilled player, which is going to be nice. Yep. Uh, but he he won't be up here. But it was basically years. for cap. Nola, I think. No. Yeah, some something like that. Yeah. Um, and then after that was the biggest trade, uh, we received my favorite we trade, <laughs> the TSA home, which Salsa you called correctly. I did like two weeks ago. I was like, and it was like basically before, like the rumors started to pick up for at home. And I'm like, I want to see at home here. And he did. I'm happy. <laughs> and yeah. I promise not to get a Jersey. Uh, 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 it's probably gonna happen, but I promise not to get an at home Jersey. Cause apparently Besides Nuge, um, every person I get like a jersey for, they get traded. It's traded immediately. <laughs> so. So, uh, yeah, Ekholm, uh, a really big package the other way though. I I uh, did think it was a bit of an overpay. I, I I wish they would have maybe retained more cap with with how much we gave them. They retained four percent of his of his uh, salary. Cap. Yeah, just to have uh, it even. And Just even to make six sure mil. We can it. Yeah. yeah, and um, I honestly didn't mind the uh, the the people we gave away because I wasn't happy with the first this year. This year is an unbelievably deep draft. Um, but we're gonna be in the playoffs, and we're gonna have like let's say in the twenties. It's who did we get in the twenties recently? Yamamoto. Well, Yamamoto was like just below twenty, but it was, like. The but third this half pick, of the... this pick should be uh, twenty eight to thirty two. Sure. Yeah, so not really like too bad, I guess. But there's there's a lot of like. But also, the thirty second pick would be a top fifteen pick in in like last year's draft. That's how deep this draft is. But still, like we need help now. We can't. We... I I don't disagree with yeah. that at all. Like that's I'm why that's why just... as well with the Reed Schaefer going the other way. I'm okay with Reed Schaefer going yeah. the other way. 
Um, I understand we have to give up to, to get. Yeah. Um, that, all yeah, all that I'm too. saying is for the amount that we gave up, it would have been nicer to have seen like a 25% cap retention. Uh, I guess so, yeah. And we could so, have yeah. gone one more depth guy in, in forward. I guess so, That's yeah. what I would have wanted to see. You know what I mean? Like, like I... Like, sure, it was a slight overpayment, but but we kind of need to do it anyway if we wanted to get at home. I agree. I so. agree. And you know what? Again, I'm not trying to be critical uh, by any means in this. Um, I think Kenny Holland did exactly what we needed. The yep. Ekholm is the exact type of the defender that we need. And he added size. Like, we're huge now. Ekholm is 6'4". Yeah. Bukestad, who we haven't even talked about yet, is 6'6". Six, six. He's that big? He's huge. Holy crap. It, it would have been nice to... Bukestad is not necessarily the most face-off friendly player, mm -hmm. uh, which is a weakness of ours as... Oh, no. I saw one of the face-off that was just now. Very nice. Uh, <laughs> it is a weakness of ours, especially in the defensive zone. Yeah. So it would have been nice to have, to have gotten... That's but apart from um, O'Reilly, like, there's not there wasn't much. It wasn't really available. much, yeah. Especially since like everyone else that we would have loved to have on our team um, was already traded. So yeah. So except Jonathan Taze, the fact that he was injured or sick or whatever that probably that sad. yeah, that's probably what what that what uh, broke like that we weren't going for him kind of thing. If we were gonna go for him. But it is what it is. Um, I just love that Ekholm or trade, and we'll just see how she goes. I guess. Can we talk about how much of a joke Arizona is right now, though? For real. Uh, not Canadian, but sure. Like yeah, Canadians <laughs> on there. Okay, so okay, so it'll count. Like they are with their LTIR that they have and all that kind of that crap. They're like. 30 million over the cap or something stupid but they're only paying their players like 47 million this a year so like they're under the basement by like 20 million but with their long-term cap they're like it over just by like, kind of thing yeah, yeah it's just ridiculous yeah like, the nhl needs to look into that because that's a joke that's a t that's an ahl team playing in an ncaa building in the nhl like what a disgrace to league the revenue is low for all that reasons too, like just just awful. Like I don't know what the owner is trying to do. Well, who owns to... it? Doesn't don't they? Who owns it? Who owns the Coyotes? I don't think the league does anymore, but Not weird. but still, like it's it. I agree, it is very embarrassing. Like I don't think any other team in any other like, uh, like league like. Any sports league, it does that, except for Arizona, I guess. So it's it just it's it's a big stain in in the NHL, I guess. Yeah. Something good to add as well is that um, so not necessarily about the trade deadline whatsoever, but uh, definitely about Canadian hockey. There is something currently going on in the NHL that hasn't happened in a very long time. It's only actually happened five different times in league history. Where Which is. a player has multi goal goals, multi goal uh, game streak or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. McDavid has now scored five consecutive games, two goals in each game. Uh, it's only been done five times. Three times uh, it's stayed at five, twice it's gone to six. The NHL record is six. So, so McDavid tough has opposition, a chance two to... games in a row against Hellebuck. Or, That's sorry, true. two games in a row against uh, uh, Winnipeg. Winnipeg. I don't think Hellebuck plays tomorrow. So if he can get two today, he might have a chance of breaking the NHL record. That's true. And but that's huge. That's That hasn't happened in a very long time. No. So That'd be that'd be pretty sick. Pretty sick to see. Um, okay, let's just go down south, I guess, for our little trade deadline tour to Calgary. Uh, what are you gonna do about it? Just the Nick, the, the Richie trade. The Richie trade and just another uh, AHL trade, basically. Who who was the player? So for the uh, not the not the Richie trade, uh, the other trade, Calgary got uh, Dryden Hunt from Toronto for Radim so Horna. Okay, so yeah, interesting. <laughs> and then 
the Richie trade. So Coyotes got Connor McKee and Brett Richie for Troy Stetcher and Nick Richie. Yeah, I don't know how that improves either team. I, I don't think it does. <laughs> like, they already have a good defense. It's basically just they're scoring on their goaltending that needs to step up. But, yeah, I don't know what it is about that team. And on paper, that's one of the best teams in the NHL. But for some reason, just like Winnipeg last year, they're just, it's just they not clicking. They Kachuk. But it's interesting because Florida is also having an awful year. So both teams in that tra- in, involved in that trade are having just god awful years. It's Coyotes, not Panthers. No, but the Florida uh, Calgary trade, I'm saying. That was Toronto and Calgary. It's also last season, Florida had a big Oh, game that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying they're miss they miss Kachuk. And like but it's okay, interesting yes. because both the teams are playing poorly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I forgive you this once. <laughs> but yeah, Calgary basically did nothing. So I mean what can you do? Like they're not in the playoff race, so they're not gonna be sellers because they still think they just like they can hopefully they make be a it. Yeah. Team. They should absolutely be a playoff team. They're better than LA. They're better than Seattle. They're better than Vegas. Just flat out, they are. They, they up until the deadline, they had a better defense than Edmonton. Yeah, I, agree I think with that. that highly of Ekholm that he's he's made this defense significantly better. Yeah. Because now Bouchard, because I think he's playing with Bouchard uh, currently, allows him to play freely, not worry about making mistakes. Because Ekholm is going to be there. Agreed. to... To bail him up. And it also like it gives you the veteran presence that you desperately need. Yes. Yes, that's true. Yeah. So. Um, but the, and they had better goaltending. Markstrom's better than both Skinner and Mark. Yes, like, I agree. Kid ourselves. I agree. And I would argue Vladar is probably better than uh, than Campbell this year for sure. Oh yeah, Skinner, definitely. No, but Campbell this year for sure. Uh, and their forward is deep. Their forward groups are deep. It's I mean, just, they still have Lucic. He's uh, absolute garbage. Man. <laughs> but yeah, it's just not clicking, and it's resulting in not being in the playoff hunt right now. So don't know what you can do, but just continue to try to play harder and see if you can get over that hump. Yeah, agreed. Uh, Winnipeg. Uh, Nita Rider was an underrated trade. That was a good trade. We gave up very little for Nita Rider. Winnipeg, I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I like Nino 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 Ryder, so that was pretty sweet to see him go to a Canadian team. And they made a trade today too, didn't they? Yep, Small they one. got uh, Nemestikov from uh, San Jose for a fourth round of 2025, so not even this year, just in the not future. Even next year. Not even next year, in the future. So, not, they definitely improved their team. Even though, even though their forwards are is already deep, they just made it even deeper. Yes, no. <laughs> Did you see their lineup for tonight's game? No. Their third line is an AHL line, dude. Huh. Their top their top six is elite. Their third like I think they have injury issues right now. Like, that's that would make a, sense. That's not a good that would bottom make sense, six. Yeah. But still, just to like provide depth and just have like more uh, more like insurance for injuries like yeah. right now, I guess. So. No, it's good. Uh, I think the Nemestikov uh, <laughs> will be underrated for sure. Um, Nia Riders are already in their second line, so mm-hmm. that's fantastic. So yeah, Winnipeg also, like Edmonton, just quietly made their... Well, I guess not. Edmonton made a huge trade that everyone noticed, but like Winnipeg did did well. Did well this trade, trade deadline. Yep. You know who did a good uh, did a good job at accumulating assets and getting rid of uh, people? It, it's uh, it's Detroit. Yeah, I think Detroit did a really good job. The chronic for a first and a second itself is brilliant. Yep. <laughs> There's ads on your phone. I know. I'm sorry. Hilarious. <laughs> we don't um, even have like actual ads for our podcast. Yeah. Hilarious. <laughs> That's true. Um. I guess it's up for the West, eh? Like, no other Western No other, teams. yeah. And then we talked about Toronto already. Yeah. Ottawa was a big one. They got the Chikrin. Um, apparently, there was a better offer for Chikrin available, but Arizona refused to take on a contract. Uh, of course. 
Yeah, because freaking was just draft picks. First, the second, and the fourth. Yeah, there condi- was a deal in place for two play a player and a, and two firsts. There multiple teams offered that, but because uh, and they refused. It. Yeah, that's. It's I think so, that's the kind of trade so that dumb. Edmonton would have offered. Probably burying our next two firsts. But I think I think Ekholm is. I think Ekholm is better. Yeah. I think Chikrin is better offensively, but I think Ekholm. But we don't really need that, yeah, because we have exactly because uh, Bouchard is playing with Ekholm and Ekholm or Bouchard is basically like a Barry light. Um, probably will have will be better than Barry in the future. Um, playing with a defensive minded Ekholm, like I said earlier. Well, free up Bouchard to do basically whatever he wants. Not whatever he wants, but like I, I agree. I think he won't have to worry too much. Bouchard with Keith last year was unreal, mm-hmm. yeah, and I think Icon will help with that. Also, we're watching the Oilers game right now. Did you see that guy's beard? No. Look at the bench. Like, look behind the Oilers bench when we're watching again. That is the most majestic <laughs> facial hair I've seen in a very long time, dude. That's incredible. I want to grow that. I could grow that. Do it. No. It would be half <laughs> It would be pretty much half <laughs> Um. So, yeah, let's go back to uh, Ottawa. So, they Ottawa. did get Chikrin, yep. which is awesome. Um. They also got uh, Patrick Brown for a six-rounder. That's not bad. So, bottom six forward, yeah. Yep. I guess that helps out, helps out their bottom six, so it's not too bad. Um. The Blackhawks uh, got Zaitsev for, and a... Uh, Second round of this year and the fourth round of twenty twenty six for future considerations. Yeah, just to get rid of Zaitsev. Just to get rid of Zaitsev, yeah. Uh they got or the Rangers got Tyler Mott for Julian uh, Gauthier and a conditional seventh rounder. That's decent. I, I like that trade for for uh for Ottawa. Mott's New York's favorite deadline acquisition in the last like two or three years. I think each deadline they, they signed Tyler Mott <laughs> and they traded for him, it feels like. Uh, I think Goche is, is a fantastic bottom six forward. I think that's, or a middle six I would even argue. I yeah. think that's good. Yeah. Um, I don't think uh, Montreal did that much to improve their team of, of course because they're... Montreal did nothing. Yeah. I don't know a um, single trade they made. So they got... Pittsburgh got Nick Benino from Montreal. Benino was in Montreal? Apparently. I didn't know that either. Huh. Yep. Um, well, it's because they got Nick Benino from San Jose. <laughs> so they got so they got Nick Benino for, from for San who? Jose for a fifth round. No, they got Nick Benino and a fifth round for Arvid Henriksen. So what? San Jose... Hey. Oh, what? Yeah, and then Nick Benino was, went to yeah. Pittsburgh for Tony Sund. Not even a pick? No. Oh, that's embarrassing <laughs> for them. Yeah, Montreal was awful today. Um, that's just bad. Montreal got Frederick Allard from from the Kings for Nate Schnarr. So, oui, oui, ce, ce n'est pas magnifique. <laughs> um, the Stars got Dadanov. Um, for ooh, I did not know that. So the Dallas Stars got uh, Evgeny Dadanov from Montreal for Denis uh, Gurianov. <laughs> Again, one for one. Like these guys aren't accumulating assets at all. Are they trying? They to should have though. Rebuild? Like at least, at least Seriously, like a second like, or something. Are they trying to get a something. quick rebuild? Like that's just. I mean, it's almost as bad as the Oilers when we were in our decade of darkness. Yeah, our trades were horrible back then. <laughs> Most of our trades were horrible back then. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for Montreal. Just one for ones and so weird, weird weird trades. They gave away more tra- uh, picks than they got. Yeah. But yeah, that's pretty much it for Canadian team. Since we already talked about Toronto. Um, out of the, I guess, the three playoff teams right now, um... What's your grade for uh, Edmonton for all the trades this week and today? You know they didn't. I'd say today. B plus. B plus. So we improved our I'd defense. I'd say B plus too. Yeah. 
we needed we we needed to have got a, a, a defensive minded uh, face off specialist, and we didn't do that. But Bukestad is huge, and he can play a good defensive game, and he's on the penalty kill. Yep, and so he not play bad. center and wing. So like that's a decent compromise. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'd give it a B plus. How are you? I would give it like a B plus. Uh, closer to an A minus, I guess. Because with at home, like it, even even just that one person improved our defense quite a bit, just because it'll because he can eat minutes, uh, at home. So if Nurse needs to like chill for a bit, then we can definitely put in at home and mm -hmm. it'll be fine. At home's playing with Bouchard, which I said multiple times already, that it frees up Bouchard to. Uh, play more offensively which is what he is yeah um and then with the acquisition of Bukestad just gives us more depth down the middle and he could also play wing so yep just gives us more insurance for especially with the right wing since uh pool party is gone so yep fair enough oh, good points good points so Edmonton did really good for like the little that they did Winnipeg? Winnipeg, um, I would give them a solid, like, C plus to B. I'm giving them a C. C's get degrees, so they'll get into the playoffs. <laughs> okay, However, okay. it's not getting them past uh, no? the first round, I don't think. Eh. I don't think the, the additions they made, their weakness is incredibly obvious. It's, cool. it's defense. Even they though Morrissey's playing defenseman. really well. Yeah, but you know in the playoffs, it's just, it's not... Like, oh, but in the playoffs, You're not going to yeah. win with one pairing. No. Right? You need depth everywhere. So, yeah. No, I agree. I agree. The, the Edmonton got swapped last year uh, by Colorado because their depth forwards and their depth defensemen outperformed our depth forwards and our depth defensemen. Yeah. Elite s stars were about the same. If anything, Edmonton stars played better. Except for McCarr. McCarr was a god. Yeah. <laughs> but oh, McDavid and Dreisaitl got swept in the conference final and still were 1-2 in, in, uh, in scoring. In scoring honestly. in the playoffs, yeah. Like, that's how unworldly they were. Um, so I think Winnipeg, for me, is a C. I genuinely do not feel they got better. They got good enough to to really compete in the playoffs okay. this year. Um, Toronto? Uh, I'd give them an A. Yeah, I give them a, an A. A plus if they find a way of if, if they would have found a way of doing uh, better for uh, uh, goaltending, but it's not realistic. No, there were there wasn't really any goalies that they could go for really. Yeah. Um. There was a, it's not Canadian, but there was like one goalie that went to two teams in like a matter of days, which is. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> Quick was not gonna report. No, to, at all. to Columbus. No, and now he's going to Vegas. So now Good. he went from a king to a knight. <laughs> he got demoted. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just brutal, man. <laughs> oh, man. But um, I don't yeah. see. I don't. I don't understand that trade. I don't understand why uh, they want Quick. Well, Maybe as a backup, but Aiden Hill and uh, what's his name, Logan, Logan Thompson, Thompson are outperforming quick all year. It's not even close. Do they bring him in just for like the playoffs? Well, maybe his playoffs were decent against Edmonton. Last they were year. pretty good, yeah. But it's like you can't just count on a guy to perform just in the playoffs when his entire year has been trash. I don't know. I don't know. But I, I just found it funny that they that he went to two teams in like two days, basically. And then I, he went from a king to a knight. The team who impressed, <laughs> who improved the most in the Pacific was Edmonton. Yes. Second three was uh, was LA. I think Gavrikov is is good physical, and I think Corpus Salo is, is an upgrade to their goaltending. Big upgrade, yeah. Yeah, but um, apart from that, I don't, um, I don't think they improved enough to to make it to the conference final. Do you think they can? I think they lose to Vegas in the first round. I think Edmonton ends up finishing first. Plays uh, one of the wild card teams. Okay, I was, I was going to say, do you think Edmonton will win the Pacific? And you basically answered that already. Yeah. Like just now. But, um, 
Yeah, I can see, I can see Edmonton finishing first, and then Vegas versus LA. Um, I can see Edmonton playing Seattle in the first round, and then Colorado, uh, whoever finishes first in the in the Central, will play against uh, Winnipeg probably. Hmm. And then, um, no, that's pretty much it for for the trades. Yeah. That's pretty much it for the episode then, eh? I guess so. Interesting. Yeah. Well, thank you for watching episode 49 of the Canis Podcast. Almost to 50. Almost to 50. Next Let's one go. will be our half century. Yes. Very exciting. Yes. And uh, tune in next week. We'll, we'll talk about uh, more sports than just hockey. <laughs> yes, you will. See you later. Canis Podcast. <laughs> we talk sports. <sighs> Canadian sports. No.